All right. We're returning. This is our fourth and final segment for the day. Just a quick reminder that Friday and Monday, I will not be live on the air. I'm going to take a well-needed break for a few days. And uh, so, but there's plenty of, uh, there's plenty of podcasts out there and, and, and videos that you can watch and catch up with. I'll put a notation on Facebook and our website that, uh, you know, we'll be off the air on Friday and Monday of, of this coming week. All right. You know, um, I'm a little tired of being nudged by this government. And that is directly taken from this traitorous piece of garbage called Cass Sunstein in his uh, drive to nudge Americans to support bigger and more intrusive government while changing behavior to suit the whims of the political class in D.C. Now, first of all, Cass Sunstein is the guy who's authored this official document and come up with this this, uh, new phraseology of nudge. And what it is is it's a social engineering principle that says, you know, we keep moving the ship, but in small doses, you know, because we have to do it via incrementalism. Because if we try to turn around and just, you know, change the nature of everything overnight, America would balk. Well, no, no kidding, they'd balk. Now, this is um, this is this is you know a, a behavioral insights project that has been kicked off by this this scumbag. Uh, Cass Sunstein. And I want to remind you of something before we get too much further into this topic today. This is a guy who advocates this nudge concept, and he's also been named to sit on the NSA review board, one of four players. So I invite you to extrapolate from that information what the result of the NSA review is going to be. I thought so. You don't even have to think long about it. This nudge thing is all about a social engineering mission to redirect the thinking of America, to accept this concept of uh, accepting that the political elitists in Washington, D.C. know what's best for us, that they have the decision-making authority and power irrespective of our desires and wishes, that our Constitution is an ancient and, for all intents and purposes, non-essential document, that we the people has no real credible argument left, and that they can deem what is in our best interest based on their sustainable models of health and education and welfare and policy and foreign policy and Uh, domestic policy relating to land ownership, private property rights, uh, use of water, use of our resources, energy, infrastructure, social engineering, social, social projects, including race relations and housing and discrimination issues. This is the, you know, that the, the, the new HUD program that they're going to spend millions upon millions of dollars to go in and decide why neighborhoods are too white, as an example, and then force those neighborhoods through zoning laws to adopt black low-income housing is a perfect example. I exposed that a week or two ago. Go find it on YouTube. This kind of, this kind of, of engineering is something America doesn't need. And, you know, it's, it's so out of, of the uh, appropriate role of government that every American should be rising up. But I got to tell you, you've been drugged into into apathy. You've been drugged into this complacency. You've been drugged physically and emotionally, spiritually, mentally, ethically, morally, politically. You are drugged by drugs, physical access to drugs, both licit and illicit. 40% of America is on some sort of an antidepressant or behavioral modification drug. That means 40% are are physically and willfully allowing their thought processes to be rewired. 
And then we wonder why nobody wants to get off the couch and stop eating potato chips and take action against a government that is obviously operating as a fascist dictatorship in our midst. Well, 40% of America doesn't even know what's happening. Combine that with the social engineering that's done by our mainstream media, the Ministry of Propaganda, Combine that with the social engineering that's being done in our education and our public school systems. Combine that with the engineering that's being done through the mass media, through television, and the constant promotion of race indifference or race, uh, race fractured, fractured race relations. Not to mention the, the cynical attitude that, you know, parents are stupid, kids always have it right, do your own thing, it's all about you, the hell with the rest of the world, it's all about me, 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 be a consumer, don't worry about any of the consequences, load yourself up with debt, keep the Federal Reserve alive, Com be, be complicit, be compliant, consume, consume, consume. That's what this is about, folks. This is social engineering in its, in its, in its full-blown maturation. This is like a flower in bloom, except the damn thing is poison. And we're eating it. Critics from across the political spectrum. This is a story from the New American. It's called the Obama Behavior Team to Nudge Us Toward Government Goals. Critics from across the political spectrum slam the controversial program dubbed the Nudge Squad as yet an exa another example of extreme federal overreach. Over a dozen federal agencies and departments are already working on, quote, behavioral insight projects. Just listen to the names that they pin on these things and, and let your imagination run wild because whatever it comes up with, it's not as nefarious and scurrilous as what they're actually planning. Trust me. Among them are the Department of Labor, the Department of Health and Human Services, that's HUD, I told, or, or uh, HHS, I mean, under Obamacare, Department of Education, Veterans Administration, Treasury, Social Security, Department of Housing and Urban Development, that's HUD, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They are arming the, 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 the this is like the Magnificent Seven in drag, but laden down with evil. Intent, not heroic, salvage. The federal government is currently creating a new team that will help build federal capacity to experiment. Hear that word, experiment with these approaches. And to scale behavioral interventions that have been rigorously evaluated using, where possible, randomized controlled trials. That's a document called Research to results, strengthening federal, strengthening federal capacity for behavioral insight. This has been posted online by Fox News. Listen, if that doesn't scream propaganda and mind control to you, I don't know what does. Quote, a growing body of evidence suggests that insights from the social and behavioral sciences can be used to help design public policies that work better, cost less, and help people achieve their goals. Their goal is your goal. Get it? Their goal is the new our goal. And they're going to help us achieve our, a.k.a. their goal. While the Obama administration's four- to five-person behavioral team is reportedly in its earliest stages. News about the federal scheme has surfaced late last month. British authorities already have a similar pilot operation in progress. Oh, here, gee, let's model ourselves after that. Of course, they're so successful, aren't they? The White House and the UK officials apparently found it to be a useful tool in promoting government policy and shaping public opinion. The various nudge efforts launched by the British government and cited by supporters of Obama's plan, including include promoting condom use in Africa, getting subjects to pay their taxes on time, and encouraging what? Here it comes. Sustainability. Ah, that magic word of Agenda 21. No, I'm not wearing a tinfoil hat. You're not using your brain. If that's what you think, 
that Agenda 21 and the sustainability word are not inextricably linked and integral to the life of each other. They are symbiotic organisms. And if you, are, if you fail to recognize the importance and the significance of that word, then you're the one who is not using their brain at all. In fact, perhaps you should have put tinfoil on your head so that the sun would not fry the microscopic gray matter that you actually have in there. The practice of using behavioral insight to inform policy has seen success overseas. And let me tell you something. I don't want anything about the United States modeled after overseas projects. Okay? Thank you very much, but no thanks. You keep those policies over there and your dental work. Okay? UK Prime Minister David Cameron commissioned the Behavioral Insight Team, which through a a process of rapid, iterative experimentation... Test, learn, and adapt, they call it, has successfully identified and tested, quote, interventions that will further advance priorities of the British government. (laughs) What? Folks, what more are you waiting for? I mean, what more proof do you need? We are being funneled like sheep. The problem is that most Americans, like sheep, are, are not cognizant or not aware, self-aware or, or situationally aware, that as we are funneled down this ever-narrowing chute, which is the nudge program and social engineering, that at some point it leads to a truck. And they're unwilling to recognize the fact that they have no idea where that truck will go. They are just blindly following the sheep in front, leading from behind, as it were. Now, I'm asking you a question. Why is it you would be willing to sacrifice yourself on the altar of this collectivist thinking when we've seen the outcome of it over and over and over again. You know, because there are plenty of sheep who actually got in the truck once previously and found that at the other side there's a slaughterhouse and they escaped and have come back into the herd to warn you, stop going down the path. Don't get in the truck. No, we're going to do what we're told. They really have our best interest at heart. Really? I mean, how foolish can you be? They go on in their in, in the British website, uh, their, in, in their explanation of their nudge unit, explains the scheme in more detail. Here's what it says. It applies insights from academic research in behavioral economics and psychology to public policies and services. It works with almost every government department, as well as local authorities, non-governmental organizations, and even foreign governments, develop proposals and test them empirically across the full spectrum of government policy. So, you're willing to be a mind control experiment e. You have absolutely no idea where the truck goes when it leaves the gate. You refuse to listen to the other sheep who have come back at their own risk to inform you that getting in the truck is not in your best interest. And you're willing to do that because there's a promise of a Snickers bar in the truck for you. It makes me wonder whether or not America is actually worth saving at points. Really. I mean, you know, there are plenty of us out there who are putting our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor, and our freedom, quite frankly, on the line for the likes of the masses who refuse to see 
the results of every past experiment in history that has gone awry and ended in the destruction and the, and the total obliteration of freedom and liberty, and yet they want to continue down the path and allow themselves to be embroiled in the same exact nonsense. I mean, what the hell are you thinking? Are you worth saving? Show me. Prove it to me. Prove to me that I and my cohorts and my compatriots in the Freedom and Patriot movement are not putting ourselves and our lives and our fortunes and our sacred honor and our freedom at risk. For you, who absolutely takes our pearls and throws them before swine. Get off the medication, real or otherwise. Why are we doing this? If you don't want to be saved, I mean, if I'm sitting here in a rowboat and there's not another boat in sight and you're flailing around in the ocean like a fish, why? And I say to you, well, here's a boat. I'm going to give you a hand up. And you say, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 I'll, st I'll wait here a little bit longer because something better is going to come along. Okay. I mean, at what point do I sit there and say, you've got to be kidding me. I'm looking over my shoulder to the left and I'm looking over my shoulder to the right and there's not anything else on the site in the horizon. I'm the only boat. And you're going to wait. And you're already weary and tired and you're not a good swimmer. Okay, what, what do you want me to say? Among its responsibilities, the site goes on to say, encouraging and supporting people to make better choices for themselves. Are they your choices or are they engineered choices that you are obliged to then adopt and accept and parrot? I mean, really, proponents of the behavior modification scheme argue that nudging is better than outright forcing, <laughs> Against, again implying that individuals must submit to the dictates of government one way or the other for their own good. Hey, listen, I would rather you just came out to me in the point of a gun and declared what side you're on so that the vast majority of America, and this is why they never will, this is why they use the nudge principle. Because if they ever came out and really, truly told you what their, what their true end game plan is, America, well, there's a certain amount of you that would still get in the truck. <laughs> I mean, clearly. But America, as a collective group, would rise up and destroy this administration, this government, this overreaching arch enemy of freedom and liberty. And so they're going to tell you what your decision is going to be. They're going to give you the rationale to accept it. They're going to reinforce that with drugs. They're going to reinforce that with, with uh, uh, television. They're going to reinforce it with, with dogma and, and, and rhetoric and you're going to, knowing the difference, willfully accept that. You're like the guy in the Matrix who says, I don't care anymore. Just put me back to sleep as long as I can eat a steak dinner like this every day. And drink a glass of wine. But you know it has, it, 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 there, 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 there's no end for you there. They know, you, and, and, and he knows, and you know, it, it, it means death. The New American is where this article is. I want you to find it. It's on our Facebook page, on our YouTube site. I'm going to put it. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll, t I'll tag it to this YouTube video. So if you're watching this on YouTube, scroll down in the comments or, you know, the whatever that section is there where I explain what's going on, and you'll find a link to it. The deeply controversial model to change public behavior draws on the work of the radical statist and, uh, and former Obama regulatory czar, Cass Sunstein, who's co-author of this, this uh, article called Nudge. Improving decisions about health, wealth, and happiness. Man, if, if you don't recognize the blatant mind control of this, the infamous figure with fringe views who styles himself as a legal scholar came under intense fire for a variety of extremist ideas, including pushing the notion that animals should have legal standing in the court, for example. 
He's also advocated a plan to have taxpayer-funded shills engage in cognitive infiltration of groups who, uh, of groups that authorities disagree with, and even proposed a government ban on conspiracy theories. That's the guy who's, whose ideas you're adopting? He wants a government ban on conspiracy theories? What is this now, the mind police? And he wants cognitive infiltration paid for by government secretly, people going in and writing on your blog, disseminating their views in an attempt to try to to uh, take your ideas, your concepts, your explanations, your own thought process, and deride it, degrade it, and, and, and make it ineffectual. Really? I mean, is that, is that not just censorship, but in another form? Leading the, nudge, the Obama nudge team is a Rhodes Scholar. Oh, boy, don't even get me started on the Rhodes Scholar group. Maya Shankar, a senior policy advisor at the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. Boy, if this doesn't smell just like Atlas Shrugged, <laughs> I, I'm telling you right now, I don't have a nose if it doesn't. This is so prescient or, or presciently uh, predicted in Atlas Shrugged. And when you read the names of these organizations and the names of even the people, it's like she had a crystal ball that was di dictating to her what the future was going to be when she wrote that. N nudge team. Does that not sound like Ayn Rand's Politics of Pull? If you haven't read the book, I, you know, you're missing, you're missing the, 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 the trailer of what's happening in the next hour and a half of your life. I don't care if it's long. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Get a copy and read it. Don't watch the movie. It won't give you any concept of what it was about. I don't read. Well, that's your problem. You don't read. You don't critically think. You would rather sit there and have some psychophantic crackpot like Cass Sunstein tell you what to think. That's exactly your problem, America. This Maya Shankar, she's a policy advisor who studied cognitive science at Yale. That controversial office, of course, is led by yet another radical statist, John Holdren. Listen to these names, people. These are the Goebbels of the, of, of the next, of the next uh, decade. Among other controversies, Holden authored the 1977 book called Ecoscience, which touted everything from forced abortion and mandatory population control to drugging public water supply. Quote, indeed, it has been concluded that compulsory population control laws, even laws, even including laws requiring compulsory abortion, could be sustained under the existing Constitution. If the population crisis became uh, sufficiently severe to endanger society, wrote Holden. Really? Compulsory abortion? Who does this maniac think he is? This guy makes Jim Jones and Adam Koresh look like they were weeblos. They haven't even achieved Cub Scout status compared to a monster like this. Considering the wild notions advanced by the architects and operators of Obama's behavior modification, modification outfit, it's hardly surprising that critics are lashing out at the scheme, even as the establishment's promoting it. They've been quiet about it so far, refusing to offer comments or, or offer any explanation. For the last month, though, opponents have been variously blasting and ridiculing the plan as Orwellian, offensive, outrageous, dangerous, communistic, insane, and everything in between. You're kidding. Judge Andre Napolitano, a former judge who respects the Constitution, slammed the scheme as, quote, Mike Bloomberg on steroids, referring to the nanny state promoting mayor of New York City. Quote, the federal government, which can't deliver the mail, has no right trying to tell us how to live. 
The minute we let the federal government to be, begin to operate outside the confines of the Constitution is when the Constitution becomes meaningless. We're wrapped for the day, guys. I, I tell you what, please find this article, spread this everywhere, show this video. I demand that you share this video and email it to at least 20 people and demand that they email it off to 20 more people. America's Voice Now dot org, Facebook dot com forward slash America's Voice Now and YouTube dot com forward slash America's Voice Now. You can find this video right there. YouTube dot com forward slash America's Voice Now. Share a link to this with at least 20 people and then tell them to move it on. <laughs> 